You guys seem to be very interested from the video I posted on Instagram on how I attached my new Sigma lens uh, on the shelf. So it is my pleasure to show you all the steps on how you can build one too and all the mistakes you should avoid. Okay, so it's basically pretty simple. The shelf is essentially two planks that were glued together. One of the planks have holes in them. The amount of holes, their placement and the, the, the dimensions of the shelf, it, how you want it, it really depends on you. Um, but I will tell you my measurements in just a second. Um, and obviously then the shelf needs to be also attached to the wall. And that's about it. So regarding the materials you will need first the wood yeah i chose two identical 18 millimeter plywood planks that were about 120 centimeter long and 25 centimeter deep the the height therefore was two times 18 millimeters which is 36 millimeters as i said before you can make any size you want them to be but i would not recommend having each plank less than 10 millimeters in thickness due to two reasons that i will address in the next part but before we get there you'll also need a drill uh, to make the holes even a battery power drill will work if you get big enough uh, hole saw bit i think that's how it's uh, called in english this one you'll need uh, wood glue or alternatively you can screw the planks together which i do not not recommend um, basically because of the aesthetic reasons. You'll also need to buy these rear lens caps. You don't need to buy the original ones as those are way too expensive. I bought third party ones from Amazon and you only need rear caps, not the set. And it doesn't matter which brand you are shooting as long as you can get the right uh, lens caps. I'll just leave a link below to most popular brand caps on Amazon so you don't have to search. Moving on, a saw is optional if you want to make adjustments to shelf dimensions and a paint, dye, oil or any type of coloring agent is also optional. Lastly, you will need to figure out how you attach the shelves to the wall. I used some heavy duty floating shelf invisible support brackets because I didn't want the supports to be visible and you know my shelves came out to be pretty heavy plus all of the lenses, it's no joke. You want this to be sturdy as truck. Okay, the step-by-step -step process. Step one, figure everything out first. Well, what will be your dimensions? How many lenses you want to put up there? Where in your space the shelves will be put up? How will you attach the shelves to the wall? What is your lens cap diameter and the height? This is why I said the thickness of your plank should not be less than 10 millimeters. For example, the, the, Sony's, the Sony's rear caps are about 11 millimeters and I didn't want them to be seen so I had them a bit deeper to properly hide them. If I were to make it today I would make the planks thickness exactly as thick as the lens cap so that it's easier to attach the lens. My dimensions for one plank as I said is 120 by 25 by 1.8 centimeters. I decided that I want to attach four lenses super important to know where exactly your support brackets are going to be mine goes in between the first and the second lens spot so i made sure there is enough space between them i also drew a sketch measured everything up and although my planks in reality were different due to availability i knew what my most important measures are aka the lens holes the measures of them and the placement so i was ready to go to the carpentry Step two is to gather all the material. You buy the lens caps, find the right wood, get the tools or the help you need and just get started. Step three is cutting. After finding the right planks and materials, I showed up in the workshop with the sketches and asked my buddy to help out drill the holes since I'm not allowed uh, around the heavy machinery. There was also a new forklift, by the way. I was not allowed to use it, same as the drill, but if I were to do this project again, I would make the rings at least 20 to 30 millimeter wider than the diameter of the lens cap, simply because some lenses are fatter than the lens cap. Again, this would not be a problem if you would put your lens caps so that they are not much deeper than the surface of the plank. Step four is sanding. I sanded down all the rough edges and cuts, especially making the rings super smooth, as I don't want them accidentally scratch my lenses. I also had planned to glue uh, felt rings as a protection, but had to ditch that idea due to the size restrictions, size restrictions as mentioned earlier. 
Step 5. Gluing. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Glue the planks together, put under the press if you have one available to have equal distribution of force and wait required hours for the next step. And step 6 is painting. I painted mine matte brown color to match other wood elements in my studio. But you know, it's, it's personal preference. You can leave it untreated even if you wish. Step 7. Lens caps. Very important step to do before you put the shelves up. Essentially, I only wanted to glue them. However, knowing that some lenses or caps are tight as hell and you have to put a lot of force to take them down, I decided to extra secure the caps also with screws. I drilled two holes in each cap and it's important to have two, not one, because you will be doing a lot of twisting motion and one screw would most likely just spin around. Here's another reason why you should have the plank in sufficient thickness. You don't want tiny screws holding the lens cap. Also, it is very important to make the bed for the screw heads. I, I really don't know the right English term, but basically you don't want the screw heads to stick out and poke the back of your lens. So use a proper drill bit and screws to get the job done. I also pre-drilled the holes in the shelves. After that, I glued and screwed each lens cap. It is important to keep all the lens caps in the same position. So you know exactly in which position should the lens be installed. If I were to make an upgrade, I would indicate a mark on the shelf on how the lens must come on, just like you have a mark on the camera body. Step 8 is a cleanup. Do a very thorough cleaning, vacuum or blow with the compressed air. You do not want any particles falling in your lens. Step 9. Attachment. I drilled pretty serious holes in the wall, inserted corresponding wall plugs, managed to paint the whole room in between two, then I drilled the holes in the shelves for the brackets, got the brackets screwed in the wall and then mounted these shelves up. Step 10 is testing. It's super crucial and essential step to do before you put your lenses up there. I personally put on top of the shelf my favorite slider from Noxon that weighs quite a bit and I know it's built like a tank. So then I left it for the night and it was good in the next morning, you know. I installed a couple of lenses, challenged the shelf a little bit and the lens cap, tried to jerk them a little bit and, you know, just made sure that everything is ready. And step 11 is to install your favorite lenses you know, put up some decorations based on your liking and send me your shelf project photo on Instagram if you end up building one yourself. So how much does it cost? Well, it really depends on the choice of materials and their availability. I was personally really lucky to get these planks for free as they were damaged and, you know, on one side there were some scratches and they were about to be thrown out. So since I glued them together, it was not a problem for me. The only cost for me was actually the, the support brackets. I think I paid about $15. The lens caps were about $10 since I bought quite many and a couple of beers for my buddies for helping out with the woodworking. And I will keep on making more fun stuff around the studio as well as the new videos about photography and videography. So make sure you check back in here soon and don't forget to keep on creating.